In this series, we nerd out on the science and physics that play a role in just about everything. We dive into the way things work and examine the incredible engineering that goes into going fast. What's up guys? Uh, today I wanted to bring up a little learning experience I had recently. You learn a lot. <laughs> when you do things wrong the first time, uh, which is exactly what I did. We went to our first autocross event and the car was just all over the place. I was bouncing on the rough road surfaces and every time I would try and really load it up into a corner and I hit a bump and in the middle of the corner the car would just buck and do all kinds of really unpredictable stuff that was kind of scary. And the reason why I hadn't noticed it before, I knew the car was always stiff, uh, but I hadn't noticed it during track racing because most circuit courses have really smooth roads. It didn't really come up uh, in any road course conditions, but as soon as I tried autocross, of course it did. Now, what specifically I'm talking about is spring rates. The amount of weight that it takes to compress the spring. Now that's measured in a couple different ways. Most of your coilover manufacturers these days are gonna go in kilograms per millimeter of movement. The BC coilovers, that came factory for the WRX is an 8K front and a 6K rear. So that's more or less set up for the weight of the car because most WRXs are about 60-40 weight distribution, which is great for all around uh, road driving conditions. You know, if you're gonna daily drive it or you wanna take it to the track on the weekends, things like that. Uh, it's a little bit light for really heavy uh, road course racing uh, just because you can still tend to get a little bit of body roll uh, even with a good sway bar on it. I bought my coilovers used. <laughs> Come to find out, I had 18K springs on there. That's more than double the heaviest spring rate that they put on the BC coilovers. Why did someone do this? The only thing that I could think of is possibly they put super heavy springs on there because they had the coilovers maxed out on low. They had lip of the rim sitting right on the fender because they were hella flush, blowing vape smoke out the window, and they didn't want the coilovers to move that much. So they got the heaviest spring rate they could buy, threw it on there. Oh my God, what a horrible idea. Now, this causes a couple different problems. Uh, one of the issues we were finding was, uh, obviously, the car's really bouncy. Every time you hit a bump, it just breaks your back. I actually ended up bending one of my lateral link arms in the rear because the car was bouncing around so much and actually coming off the ground. Not a good thing. All coilovers are set up so that you have what's called uh, preload, which is how much uh, preload compression you put on the spring. Most of the time, you also want a little bit of preload compression which is when you set the car down on the ground and the weight of the car bears down on the coilovers, it compresses a little bit. The problem with these is that bar, when it, you put it down on the ground, it didn't compress the springs at all. The springs were sitting at full extension even when the weight of the car was bearing down on them, which would transfer a lot of road vibration. Say the car hits a bump really fast, well, it would compress and then bounce the car and since you don't have any upward movement because it's already maxed out at the top of the coilover, it could bounce the car off the road. It's just really, really dangerous. We ended up going with uh, a spring rate that was recommended to us by uh, someone who autocrosses regularly in the GCA chassis actually, so they know how this car acts. They said to get a 10K front and a 12K rear. So if you refer back to a previous video when we're talking about getting rid of understeer and Subarus, we say to stiffen up the rear of the car a little bit more with sway, things like sway bars uh, and your dampening rate. And that actually helps weight transfer to the front uh, and cut some of the understeer tendency that Subarus tend to have. Now you can do the same thing with spring rates. So what I ended up going with just because of what BC had available at the time was a 10K front and an 11K rear, which is close enough to the compression rate that he recommended. Uh, and plus the whole car is gutted, so I don't really have a lot of weight in the back. And the next event that we went to after I installed the springs made a world of difference. The car handled great. It didn't buck around on the track. Uh, even on the really nasty parts of the course, 
The car handled awesome. The ABS wasn't kicking on all the time because the suspension was actually doing what it was supposed to keeping the tire on the ground. If you want to do lots of track racing, you want to play around with the suspension a little bit, changing your spring rate out is always a good way to uh, really change the, the drive characteristics of your car. Don't do it the wrong way. Just because you want to be hella flush doesn't mean you need an 18K spring.